The 2022 season was a successful one for Georgia Highlands and Coach Dash O'Neill. They won their second straight GCAA regular season title and their second consecutive Region 17 championship. Along the way, O'Neill earned his 200th career win and the Chargers to set a bevy of program records. But the pursuit of a spot in the JUCO World Series came up short as Georgia Highlands fell in the Appalachian District Championship. Now the Chargers enter the 2023 season with designs on taking the next step, and they'll be doing it without some key faces from a year ago. Among those moving on are GCAA Player of the Year Connor Todaro, along with all-conference selections Ben Olson, David Smith, and Caden Smith. Their losses have meant an opportunity for new leaders to step up and fill the void. And already, O'Neill has seen players ready to take on that responsibility. Yeah, I think I think they recognize it's their turn, you know, and, and I think they recognize that there's a tradition that they have to uphold and a standard that, that is now really theirs to, to bear, you know, to make sure that we get above it. And so, um, you know, I hope that it's something that's really exciting for them. I mean, it's exciting to me because I get to see these guys bloom and, and, and get their chances. Key there will be the left side of the infield where the Chargers will look to all-conference shortstop Zay Brannigan and third baseman Mitchell Walker. I think we have some guys that, that have, have kind of emerged. I think Zade Brannigan and Mitchell Walker um, definitely are, are the, the front of that group. That's fair! That's two! All right, let's go lock in. Two more. Let's go, Brannigan. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Cha-cha. That's for show three for five, bro. Y'all got to give me that first one. Y'all are goofs. They're trying to just, because I'm mic'd up. They're trying to get me. Brannigan hit 344 with an OPS of 1,027 last season, delivering nine home runs, 15 doubles, two triples, and 62 RBI. And again, this dynamic, both at the plate and in the field, his biggest asset, maybe his passion for the game. I think that I'm the energy to the team. Like if I'm playing, I can't be the guy that's quiet sitting there. Some dudes are. I feel that I'm the guy to pump up everybody else. When you make a good play, trust, Zade Brannigan's gonna say something about it. But I'm not the dude to down you. Like you make a bad play, I'm gonna just turn around like nothing. I'm not about to, you get over that by yourself. But when you do good, I think I'm the spark of the team. Like, I might do something a little more erratic than somebody else would on something that they get happy about. If I hit a triple, I'm not about to get up and stand there. I'm about to go crazy when I get up, you know? And I think people feed off my energy. You no, know, he's, a, he's a catalyst to this team. Um, I love him to death because he, he just brings a, an unmatchable energy. You know, other teams can't really match it. And that's some guy, you know, you need his leadership and you need a guy like that on the team. Um, because he's more of the vocal leader, obviously, as well as leads by example. He just, you know, he loves to play. He loves being out here. He wants to do it the right way. He wants to be as good as he can possibly be. So his development's been unbelievable. I mean, from where he was coming out of high school uh, to where he is today, I mean, he's an entirely different player. Um, you know, obviously his bat has made a huge jump. He was always a really good defender, but even that, he's, he's gotten a lot more consistent. But um, I think just in terms of leadership, I think him, him being able to play with some of the guys that he's played with in the past and seeing the way that they operate, I, I think he really watched what they did. Um, and and took the things from them that, that helped them be successful. And he's, he's kind of taken ownership of them. And so I see a lot of the same traits in him now that I saw in some of the guys that, that probably he looked to and, and thought of them as leaders and, and guys that have been captains in the past. A native of St. Thomas Virgin Islands and product of Georgia's Dominion High School, Zade followed in the footsteps of his brother Kalik, who played junior college ball at State College of Florida before playing at Lemoyne Owen College and Shorter University. My brother went to JUCO and my parents were kind of like, you're young, so in the Virgin Islands, we graduated at 17. So I was 17 coming into like the first couple weeks of Highlands. And I didn't want to go to, I could have walked on to the D1 or I could have gone to some D2s, but I was like, I want to go to junior college, so I go to D1, get better, get stronger. And I did that and I could not say, this was the best thing I've ever done, I think. This past winter, Zaid represented the Virgin Islands in the 2022 Caribbean Baseball Cup in Nassau, Bahamas, giving the Virgin Islands his first win of the event when he hit a two-out walk-off single in the ninth to top Curacao. Brannigan's future is set. Next year, he'll be heading to Western Kentucky to play for the Hilltoppers. But before he leaves the Chargers, Brannigan wants to leave behind a winning legacy. 
I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered as being like a spark player. Like I do the right things, but I could all I could come up in the big moment. I like the big moment, so I want to be a big moment guy, and that's about it. Make the plays that I have to make, but when it's this crunch time to hit a double, Zay Brannigan comes up big to hit that double. You know. Last hitter, I got to steal. <laughs> chill, chill. Nothing. Calm down. I don't know that. Oh. Did you use that right hand? Oh. Yeah, thank you. I don't want to break your mic. Hey, finish it off, Bobby. Got you over here. I went ahead first because I didn't want to break the little box thing in my back pocket. I know. I didn't want to break the box in the back pocket. That would have been way worse. I just had to pay for it. I don't got that kind of money. A product of Harrison High School, Mitchell Walker played in 17 games a year ago, hitting 208, 436, 250. He's taking over as a starter at third base, where Ethan Anderson won a GCAA Gold Glove a year ago. If there's a consensus when it comes to Walker's game, it's that his drive and determination are his defining traits. He's just a guy that I think, you know, in terms of just reliability and being dependable and just being there for you i mean that's really who mitchell walker is i don't i don't think i do one and i've been told i don't think i do one thing particularly well um i've kind of always played with a chip on my shoulder because i've been told you know you're not fast enough you don't throw hard enough you don't hit for a lot of power um and so i think the biggest part of my game is just i'm a competitor and i'm a winner and i feel like i want it more than the guy that i'm facing um, and I think that's what's led me to be most successful in terms of playing in college. Like so many other members of the class of 2020, the recruiting landscape was challenging for Walker. But O'Neill found a place for him as a walk-on with the Chargers, and he's making the most of it, with his eyes on a chance to turn his time at Georgia Highlands into his next baseball opportunity. It was not easy uh, coming out of high school in 2020, the COVID year, of course. Um, recruiting was really down. but. Um, uh, Coach O is, uh, I was blessed enough to have him reach out and just say, hey, you want to spot on the team? Because I was just looking to play somewhere with the COVID year and everything else. So I was like, yeah, of course, sign me up as a walk-on and whatnot. And uh, it was history from there. I've just continued to work hard. And um, I want an opportunity to play at the next level, obviously. And um, hopefully if I can just continue to work hard and just keep doing what I've been able to do these last three years, that'll, that'll happen. Walker's leadership style is more show than tell making the combination of him and the energetic brand again just work. Like, he shows it. He shows it better than anybody else on the team. Dude works hard, he's out here every day to get better, but he's not a big talker. So he's the opposite of me with talking. Like, he's a quiet kid, so he'd sit there and calm and he wouldn't get too excited, but he shows it from his way he does stuff. He does everything right. He does it right every time. He doesn't take reps off. He doesn't say a whole lot. You know, he's not, you know, he's not out there running his mouth a whole lot and, and, uh, and doing those sorts of things. But, you know, when you watch him work, it's hard not to appreciate him and admire what he brings to the table. And so I think he's that perfect leader by example. And I think just his dependability. I mean, he's just proof that if you just keep doing the right things long enough, you know, eventually you're going to get your turn. So I think that's Kind of what I try to do in terms of leadership is uh, just to lead by example, because I'm not really a vocal guy like that, but um, just to kind of lead by example and just to go about my business the right way and approach the day the right way and just, um, just kind of be there to help my team and just to have my team's back. The players setting the tone have changed, and if anything, any outside expectations for this team have made the Chargers driven to show they won't miss a beat. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that, um, that looking in the past and looking at last year, like all those wins counted for last year, but they don't count as this year. So um, looking looking at the season last year isn't gonna win us anything this year. We have a totally different team. You know, we got a lot of people saying, you know, we lost all those guys. So I think that kind of puts a chip on our shoulder that, you know, we can be, we can still be a great team. We can still have a lot of success and we can still, you know, carry out the legacy of this program. The end goal remains the same. But Walker believes it's the way that the Chargers attack each and every day that will determine the course of this season. 
Well, I think a successful season would obviously be to grand, get to Grand Junction um, and compete in a World Series. That would be and to dogpile the end of our last game with a, with a win. Um, but I think it, what's most important is to not look at the big picture, at least right now. We've got to set small goals as a team, and that would look like coming in every day, attacking the weight room, attacking uh, the practice field, the drills, the bullpens, just everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, after that, it would be uh, winning all the non-conference games. And then when we get to conference, being conference champs. After that, Super Regionals. And then after that, Grand Junction. So I think the, the best thing we can do is to just um, take it one goal at a time. And uh, I think that's the recipe for a successful season.